Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Friday, May 3rd. So we have the moon in Pisces all day. So of course the moon in Pisces means we have to slow down. We have to rest up. We have to realign with our intuition, with our goals, with our vision. We have to really get in touch with new excitement, new inspiration, really kind of see what it is that we want to dream up from here, what it is that we want to create, what it is that we want to pursue. Now, of course, there are some other energies really pushing us into this urgency type of energy where we have to take action now, where we have to make moves, but we have to resist that for the time being as we kind of, again, tie up the loose ends of the old before we're actually gifted with a clean slate to start pursuing the new. With this moon in Pisces, we can definitely get overwhelmed with thoughts, with emotions, with the subtle energies from our environment. We can get overwhelmed to the point where we just want to shut down, where we want to disconnect, curl up in a ball, so to speak. However, the healing energies, the purification energies, the transformation energies are exactly what we need. And of course, the Pisces energy is wrapping up a cycle, wrapping up a chapter and preparing us to start fresh with new ideas, with new inspirations, with new motivations that we're actually going to be able to take action upon when the moon shifts into this Aries energy. And of course, we approach that new moon in Taurus and we start anchoring in the cornerstone foundation that we need in our lives, stabilizing this present moment so that we can begin to build to create, to add upon some of the ideas and inspirations that we're still kind of confused about at this particular juncture that we become more and more clear. Now, again, just a reminder, Pluto just went retrograde. If you haven't listened to that astral forecast, I'm definitely going to recommend you do that. If you haven't downloaded your Zodiac forecast for the month of May, I'm going to recommend you do that. There's some intense energy swirling right now where a major change, a major transformation feels like it's going to happen, but we're lacking the actual proof, the physical evidence to support that particular, let's call it inner wisdom. And because of that, the struggle between our egoic selves, depending on what it is that's currently in our faces and what it is that we're able to see versus our higher selves, having that hope, that faith, that wisdom, that knowledge that we can actually see changes take place in our physical realm any time that we shift our perspective and see our lives from a different angle. So there's layers upon layers of complex energies where chapters are ending, new chapters are beginning. And again, the awkwardness of adjustment period never feels good. So this is why many of us are confused and struggling. You're either in a deep funk, deep depression, deep anger, or you're highly enlightened, understanding that, yep, We've been going through it, but you can feel the change. You can feel the energy shift within you. you may not understand what it means as of yet, but this is the dualistic polarized nature of having Pluto go retrograde, take us on an inner journey to examine the split, the difference, the dualistic nature within us, the power struggles, the arguments, the let's call it effort to control this new version of self. So there's definitely a lot going on. Now, with that being said, we are going to have a pretty interesting dynamic pop off between Mars and Pluto here today. We'll talk about that in just a second. But overall, we just have to understand that this is observer mode. This is, you know, processing emotional situational modes in order for us to close the door on this particular chapter that again date back to the new moon total solar eclipse in that Aries energy April 8th we have to clean up the mess we have to get realigned we have to get reorganized before we're jumping into a new chapter that of course is going to physically manifest under that new moon in Taurus so we're again still stuck in this adjustment period that being said there are 10 different aspects taking place here today, and eight of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in Pisces energy going to kick the day off with a semi-square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Chiron, the wounded healer in this Aries energy. And of course, this is our boss up, our egoic identity shifting, our rebranding, if you will. But this is a semi-square, which means that, again, the moon in Pisces, very connected to who we once were, 
what we once built, what we once created, very connected to reflecting back on the past. While Chiron in this Aries energy doesn't really care about that. We're trying to anchor in this new version of self. We're trying to think about the present moment. We're trying to think about the future. And the moon in Pisces, again, is pulling us back because we have loose ends that we have to tie up. We have realizations that we have to have. We have epiphanies and pop-offs that we have to have before we can move on to this new chapter. So this particular aspect, definitely going to highlight the wounds going to highlight where it is that we're feeling victimized, where it is that we feel like we're being punished, where it is that we're feeling funky in depression, where it is that we're feeling very uncomfortable in our skin, like we don't fit in anywheres in our physical realms, in our current environment. We have to let that funkiness take over in order for us to gain a bigger, broader perspective on why these particular situations are taking place to push us into a new lever of power, of change, of transformation within ourselves. So 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger, is going to sextile, which is a beautiful interaction. It's a merging of energies with Pluto, the great transformer himself, who just went retrograde in this Aquarius energy. So we have the god of war and the god of the underworld working together. What are we working together about, you may ask? Well, first of all, this is trying to hone in our determination, our motivation, the intensity that we need to hold in our mind space, in our heart space to actually succeed, to push through the blockages, the challenges, the obstacles, and actually see a certain goal, a certain dream, a certain vision actually come to life. This is about control. Okay, Mars in this Aries energy is about our, let's call it physical and energetic management. Pluto needs us to be operating from the highest form of our higher self so that we have power and control not only over our thoughts and our emotions and our energy, but stepping into the creator position that we are going to be able to test out here in a couple of weeks, we have to be in boss up mode. And so what this is doing First of all, it's focusing in, concentrating our focus, our time, our energy, our attention on the power struggles that we're currently struggling with. This again is old versus new, is ego versus higher self, is old patterns and behaviors kind of, you know, bumping heads with the new habits, routines and behaviors that we're trying to anchor in with this new version of self. This is an opportunity for us to get clear on what our goals actually are. And again, reminder, this doesn't have to be huge goals like, you know, starting a business or taking over the world. It could be small little goals in the run of your day, such as stop saying yes to the things that you automatically want to say no to. Stop giving your power away. Stop allowing other people to manipulate your energy, your emotions, your thoughts. This could be on a great big grand scale or a smaller scale. Either way, there's a push and pull, a back and forth, a tug of war taking place within each and every single one of us right now. And this is the energy that is going to trigger and activate our passion, our desires, even if they're coming out of a sense of anger, even if they're coming out of a sense of us feeling trapped, doesn't matter. We're building the energy. We're cultivating that inspiration, that excitement, that determination, that motivation that we're going to need in order to enter into this chapter. Because again, Pluto's taking us all the way into the fall again, eclipse season, where we have to kind of build up our energies in order to actually see things through. So this is where our goals and our ambitions, our determination, our motivation is going to be hyper focused, super, super increased because we're getting in touch with what it is that we want. And if you're using the framework on figuring out what it is that you want by identifying what it is that you don't want, then do that. But either way, we are processing. That is the lunar phase that we are in. We are sorting out and processing what needs to stay, what needs to go, what we don't want to deal with anymore, what we would prefer to deal with as an alternative. And this, in turn, is going to kind of help us devise a plan, a path, a strategy on how it is that we are going to remove certain aspects out of our lives in order for us to have the space to build something new. So this is going to be a major refocusing on what it is that we have 
have to get our heart and our head in alignment for so that we can take action, engage the physical bodies to make the moves that are needed and required in order for us to close the door on the old and actually start pursuing the new. Major, major intensity taking place between this I'm going to say beautiful interaction between the God of war and the God of the underworld, the shadow part of our existence. So definitely going to have major mood, major attitude feeding off of this particular aspect. The moon in Pisces then going to make a positive interaction with first Uranus, the great awakener in this Taurus energy, and then shortly thereafter with Jupiter, planet of growth and expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings also in this Taurus energy. Again, reminder, Uranus and Jupiter are still within orb of each other. They just had their great conjunction on April 20th. That was a major, major reverberating effect, a domino effect, if you will. That's going to take a couple more weeks in order to actually see the unexpected events of growth, of prosperity, of abundance actually manifest and take form in this physical realm. If you've been listening to me for any amount of time, you would know that I really enjoy Pisces energy and Taurus energy working together, mostly because the Pisces energy that is the metaphysical realm kind of allows us to do a dance in our imagination, allows us to connect to our higher selves, allows us to kind of dabble in different visions, goals, and dreams that we definitely would love to pursue. We live in la-la land in the Pisces energy, but the Taurus energy allows us to bring those particular aha moments, dreams, goals, visions, imagination, fantasies into the physical realm. The Taurus energy is the physical body, is the physical realm, is materialization. And so we bring the magic from Pisces energy into the physical realm of existence through our thoughts, through our feelings, through our awareness. And the Uranian energy, first and foremost, is going to open up our mind, give us a brand new perspective, an aha moment, if you will. And once you have one of those aha moments, you can't unknow them. It really puts you in a different situation to see things through a different lens, if you will. It helps us to understand our lives, especially our struggles from a different level of awareness. And because of that, kind of opens us up to seeing where it is that we could make some changes, where it is that we could adopt new methods, new ways of doing things, new ways of operating, really kind of tweaking, if you will, our ways of going about life, our ways of interacting, our ways of communicating in order to create a different result. Now, the interaction with Jupiter is going to instill us with optimism, with confidence. We're picking ourselves up. We're dusting ourselves off. We're feeling hopeful. We're feeling very, I'm going to say, wishful that some of the ideas, some of the shifts in our energy, some of the aha moments, some of the realizations actually have some meat and potatoes to it, meaning there's weight there. It can be brought to life. There's something there that we can work with. There's new information. There's new intuitive insights. There's new aha moments that's going to not only push the boundaries of our comfort zone and push us into a situation and a circumstance where we can grow using the tough love life lessons in which we've already learned in our life, integrating it in this present moment in the here and now in order for us to create new opportunities for change in our physical realm. The moon then goes ahead, sextiles, beautiful interaction with the sun also in this Taurus energy. So again, we're just vibing here. This is a very good energetic buildup. Now, anytime that the moon and the sun come together, there's going to be a shift in our emotions. Why? Because there's an emotional awareness. What does that mean? It means that we have a different perspective. We have a new idea of what it is that we need to do. We have new passions, new desires, new ideas, new visions, new goals, new dreams that suddenly are percolating within us, making us feel optimistic and confident and hopeful that we're actually able to bring these things to life. Now, the moon, of course, is our inner emotional realm in Pisces energy, helping us to kind of override that funkiness to see where it is that we have the ability to kind of heal and grow through some of the tough love life lessons that we've been experiencing over this past month. The sun shining a bright light in Taurus energy is showing us what needs to change in our physical realm, especially where uh, the way that we feel about ourselves is concerned, where routines are concerned, where our relationship dynamics are concerned, where money matters are concerned, because everything in this present moment needs to be tweaked just a tad in order to align with the new long-term goals, long-term vision, long-term dreams that we're now looking to manifest. So beautiful interaction. 
We further that particular, let's call it growth spurt in our energy and our mood and our attitude with the moon in Pisces making a positive interaction with the North Node in this Aries energy. So the North Node, as you may remember, is trying to get us on the right path. And the right path for us right now is to detach from a lot of the, let's call it, energetic relationship dynamics that we're too connected to, too attached to, too intertwined to, that isn't giving us the time, energy, and space to A, know who it is that we are without these energetic influences, and B, pursue a path, a goal, a vision that is important to our own individual soul's evolution. And so this particular illumination, if you will, first of all, we're thinking about the future. We're thinking about what we want to do. We're thinking about what we want to pursue. That moon in Pisces is hypersensitive. It's downloading greater, grander visions, if you will, on what our higher self needs us to do and pursue. And so we're starting to piece together some possible steps that could be taken to A, close the door on some power struggles of the past and B, really start advancing ourselves towards this new goal, vision, or dream. The moon is then going to come up to bump into team up with Saturn. Saturn is the Lord of Karma. He's in this Pisces energy. He rules over roles and responsibilities. He rules over structures and foundations. He rules over willpower and discipline. Now, as you know, a conjunction is an ending just as much as it is a beginning. And so the ending may trigger, let's call them thoughts, emotions, memories, um, energetic, let's call them focuses on where you feel stuck, on where you feel blocked, on where you feel like you're being punished, where you feel like you're being held back in life, where it is that you're feeling a little bit melancholy, where it is that you're feeling a little bit depressed. Now, again, all of those darker states of being have a lot to offer us. They're really strong, intense learning moments. But alternatively, we could, because it is also a beginning energy, we could feel empowered. We could feel like we are having a clear vision in our mind's eye on what we have to do to boss up, what we have to do to change the roles and responsibilities in our life, change the direction in which our life is currently taking understand where it is that we've been lacking willpower and discipline, where it is that we need to really embody these particular qualities and characteristics if we stand a chance in how I'm building something new in our physical realms. Because this is also about belief systems, because again, Saturn being in this Pisces energy is attempting to kind of deconstruct and collapse the false set of belief systems that we've been operating under. This is a realization on what parts of our, let's call it past, that we no longer align with, that we no longer feel energetically connected with. Uh, this could really put into focus where it is that we've been chasing a dream that is not even, not only not realistic, but not even uh, a, a vibration, a frequency match to our current version of self and our potential. This is a realization on what needs to end in order for something new to begin. And the new beginning is just around the corner. It's just that many of us are taking a good look around at our physical realms and nothing has changed. Nothing is indicating a change. Nothing is validating that a change is even about to take place. And this is why your faith, your belief system is so important. If you believe that the physical realm is going to dictate your possibilities for your future self, you're going to be in a, in a state of depression a lot. But if you hold that energy, you hold that hope, that wish, that trust that everything is going to work out, it doesn't matter what your physical realm is throwing in your face. You know better because you're in alignment with your higher self. And so we have to keep ourselves in check here and this, because Saturn usually does bring a little bit of a reality check, this is a aha moment on where it is that we have to close the door on the past, because again, we're in the lunar phase where we have to you know, tie up those loose ends before we're going to be able to start building towards this new goal, this new vision, this new dream. Okay, so the moon is then going to semi-square Pluto, which isn't going to feel so good. And then we are going to move into a little bit of a tougher energy. And this, let me just give you a little bit of a timestamp here. This is around 7.25 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So the moon semi-squares Pluto. 
So we can expect that just as we were building through those beautiful energies throughout the day, suddenly our egoic programming is going to get to us. Pluto is retrograde. What does that mean? It means that we have to move inward. We have to examine our psyche. We have to examine the fears, the doubts, the insecurities that we're holding within us. We have to examine where it is that we have some self-sabotaging tendencies and behaviors within us. It has to show us where it is that we are allowing the old version of self and therefore the egoic programming of fears, doubts, and insecurities to take charge. It is now essentially sucking the magic out of the energy that we've been building throughout the day. So again, when negative Nancy and Debbie Downer and Betty the bully come out to play, that's your egoic programming trying to convince you to stop having hopes and wishes and faith and trust in the universe that anything is going to be different. It wants to paralyze you so that you don't grow, you don't evolve. And we are going to experience a time with this particular energy where it's going to become so overwhelming that you're one going to curl up in a ball and just kind of ride it out. The negative Nancy narrative is going to get to you. And suddenly, because Pisces energy is the, let's call it victim mentality of the Zodiac, we have a tendency to kind of slip into, whoa, poor is me. Why is this happening? I deserve better blah, 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 blah. Nothing's going to get better. This is the darkness that we have to sit in. This is where we have to kind of like break ourselves down and beat ourselves up a bit so that we kind of resurrect in a brand new energy, in a brand new power. The sun in Taurus energy is going to semi-square Neptune. So Neptune is in his place of power in this Pisces energy at 29 degrees, mind you, critical crisis degree. So this is why we're all kind of confused and all over the place and having bouts of depression and then becoming super hopeful. And then suddenly we have a vision and we see some clearer details. And then suddenly we lose that vision and we lose ourselves in the darkness and confusion. It's all over the place. But anytime that the sun and Neptune are coming together in a tension filled aspect, first of all, it's going to heighten our energy, our sensitivities, if you will. It's also going to put a lot of pressure on us because we feel like we need to make a decision. However, indecision reigns supreme under this particular influence. This is the back and forth. This is the I'm not so sure. This is yes, I feel like this is the right answer. And then two seconds later, no, I don't think it is. This is the limbo, the adjustment period that we are in. This is definitely going to put ants in our pants, make us a little bit frustrated and agitated. Our willpower, our vision, our hopes, our wishes, our dreams take an absolute deep dive into the darkness. And suddenly we don't even know what our goals are. We don't even care about our goals. We don't even want to think about our goals. And so this is like a gentle nudge, although it's not that gentle, uh, to remind you that first of all, Y'all are just kind of creating more anxiety. And I say, y'all, I'm doing it to myself too. I'm not, I'm not, you know, speaking from my high horse here. We're all going through this. But we, as a human collective, we tend to create more anxiety where there needs to be. Uh, again, we're in Taurus season. We actually shouldn't be thinking that far in the past or that far in the future because presence is the name of the game here in Taurus season. And so we're creating a lot more pressure where there needs to be. We're not in a situation where we should be making any decisions, but yet we apply the pressure that we think that we should. Um, we're not in a situation where we should be initiating something new, although the urgency flowing through our bodies would suggest that we should. And so this is a point in time where we just need to chill. We just need to calm the F down, right? The moon is in Pisces. We're wrapping up a lunar cycle here. We need to rest. We need to observe. We need to lose ourselves in la-la land to focus on the good. We need to remind ourselves that we're not being punished, that we're not being broke down, beat down. We are merely experiencing a physical realm and reality that our vibration and our frequency, our mindset is basically creating for us because we are merely just experiencing a physical realm that is being projected out of our mind state. And so we have to step back. We have to kind of calm our, you know, energetic flames down. We have to realize that the best thing that we can do right now is to be present in this moment and have the attitude for gratitude. So the last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Pisces making a very positive interaction with Mercury, ruler of the mental plane in this Aries energy. 
So lucky for us, this is a good interaction because if it wasn't, then our heart and our head would even further distance themselves on separate pages and in some cases, different chapter books altogether. This is a good interaction, which means that emotionally speaking, the moon and Pisces, we're on the same page with our headspace. Now, here's the thing. Our headspace, Mercury, is in Aries energy, hot to trot, ready to jump into something new. But at this particular point in time, it's almost like that earlier energy, especially, you know, between the moon and Pluto and then the sun and Neptune, that was kind of like a, okay, you know, pause, pump the brakes. We just need to chill. We need to realign. We need to ground. We need to center. We need to be in the present moment. We need to focus on all of the good things instead of all of the bad things. Well, the moon in Pisces allows us to emotionally heal from, let's call it the anxiety, the pressure, the depths of the darkness that we could have lost ourselves in earlier in the day, but we didn't. We we kept ourselves in check. And Mercury, who of course is just wanting to go, go, go into the future, is realizing, especially in this Aries energy, that we have a warrior spirit that we haven't had in a very long time and that we're spitting the truth, we're spitting the facts, even if we're spitting them to ourselves. And so this little bit of, I'm going to say, um, agreement between our heart and our head is let's just chill. Let's just think about the ideas that are good, that are positive, that are creating excitement. Let's not add any pressure. Let's rest. Let's realign. Let's just kind of chill out. Let's get on the same page. Let's be patient because again, up until the new moon in Taurus, there's not much happening here. We have to be patient. We have to wait for that green light go ahead to actually take action and make moves. But of course, as you may already know, we have to get our heart and our head in alignment before we can engage that physical body to do anything. So this is the point in time where we're defragging our old operating system, where we're clearing out the junk in our emotional realm in our head space. We're I'm going to say lightening the load as we prepare to move into this brand new cycle.